received $400,000 worth of scholarships in my life. And personal statements were key in achieving all of those. Best personal statements have one thing in common, storytelling. In this video, I'll share six storytelling arcs that will take your personal statement to the next level. What is a personal statement? It's an essay of around 500 to 1,000 words where you describe your life in one story. It's an essay that tells the university or any place you're applying to why they should take you, what's your story, and what is the conflict that you solve to become the hero of your own journey. Typically, these are needed for university applications or job applications in some cases, but mostly for getting into educational institutions. The point of a personal statement is to be memorable. It is to tell a story that makes the reader remember who you are and admire you. And storytelling techniques can really take your writing to the next level. So let's get started with the storytelling. The first storytelling arc I want to talk about is the hero's journey. It's a classic storytelling arc that was popularized by Joseph Campbell in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. The original hero's journey has eight phases, but I find a three phase approach way easier for shorter essays. The three act structure is the setting, the confrontation, and the resolution. In the first part, the setting, you set up the scene before the conflict. Maybe you failed a math exam. Maybe a family crisis happened. Or maybe you woke up one morning and turned into a giant cockroach. Kafka-esque, yes I know. In conflict, you build on top of the setting. You try to talk about more challenges that you faced on that way. These are like mini quests or mini battles in a game. You want to explore and show how you achieved your final level or your final victory through winning multiple small conflicts. You really do this to make your story more believable. Because if you say that you reached level 10 from level 1, no one trusts you. That's hard to believe. But if you show the journey of how you went from level 1 to level 3 and then to 5 and 7 and so on, your narrative is more trustworthy. Because people often lie in their resumes and these kinds of personal essays. So it's important to really pave the pathway to success, not only claim that you were super successful. Finally, in resolution, you resolve the conflict. You say how you won after many battles and how each mistake made you a better player at the game. Or maybe you did not win, but you still have the graciousness of accepting the journey as something that was meaningful. Perhaps victory was not the point, growth was the point. Any way you want to resolve your story, that's up to you. But this three-part structure of starting with a setting and then having multiple conflicts and then resolving with a resolution is a great way of ending the hero's journey. I recommend the hero's journey for everyone. It is the most formulaic way of writing a personal statement. It's usually very easy and you can follow a three-part structure. It fits very nicely into an essay and you can have a fun time writing it. Also, 92% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So please smash the subscribe button if you find this interesting. Building's Roman is a classic storytelling technique we used for coming of age stories. In this kind of stories, you want to focus on the moral and the character growth that you had from your early childhood to your adolescence and then your youth. It's a way of saying to the world that I started as a child and now I'm an adult with this awesome skill set. So you want to focus on the evolution of your thinking and your value systems. Maybe in the past you were rude, but now you're a much kinder person. Or maybe before you worked hard because you wanted good grades or your parents just forced you to work hard. But now you work hard for more noble reasons. You really like physics or you really are passionate about doing something for the climate. So this character and moral growth of your actions that inspires you to be a better person, a better youth and a better adult is what Billings Roman is all about. So the contrast principle is really effective for Billings Roman. You can always say that I started here and I ended here and look at the growth that I had in my short life. Who are some writers you can follow for learning and reading Billings Roman? The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger is a great example. In that book, the protagonist, a young man, makes his sense and identity as he goes through adolescence and finally finds his identity in an adult world. Siddhartha by Herman Esse is also another great example. In that book, Siddhartha finds the meaning of his life and what he wants to do at understanding where they belong in the world. Stream of consciousness is a great storytelling technique. In the stream of consciousness, you do not have an outline in mind beforehand. You sit with a piece of paper and a pen or your keyboard if you're a computer person like me and just let ideas flow from your head to the paper. You're not thinking, you're just trying to write things. You're trying to be creative and have the words pour out onto the canvas. It's really like an artist's pen following 
a burst of imagination and making different lines and sketches on a canvas. And finally, somehow a beautiful art emerges out of the canvas. Or it's like a sculptor who's trying to sculpt something beautiful, but they're just molding the piece of clay to an eventual beauty. So stream of consciousness can help you write awesome ideas, creative ideas onto the paper, but it's a very raw form of writing. So you have to do a lot of careful editing. One common thing after stream of consciousness is that the piece becomes very long and wordy and you use a lot of verbose words, really long sentences. So careful editing is important to maybe trim down a 3000 word stream of consciousness essay into a 500 or 600 word personal statement. The pros of stream of consciousness is that this is very creative, unorthodox, and you might be able to come up with things that your conscious mind is not capable of. You know, creativity is like a stream. It's probably like a tornado, it's hard to control. And that's why the idea is you let it flow. But the cons are, it can be disorienting, it can be disorganized, and you have to do organization after in the editing phase. So you use the creativity from stream of consciousness, and then you become methodical and organized and make it a very strategic personal statement. I think it's very important to be objective in the editing phase, because I see a lot of people write a stream of consciousness essay. And because it was so creative, they become married to the creative process. At the end of the day, a personal statement is a strategic personal branding or marketing piece for yourself. So you have to bring back the strategy of applications and all the game theory behind it back into the essay. Some great writers to study for stream of consciousness would be James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, and Michael Proust. Would I recommend stream of consciousness for everyone? No, I'll only recommend to those who are already comfortable with writing narrative pieces and who consider themselves as good writers. So people who read a lot of books, who like the writing process, who like to be creative, I think it's a good approach for them. For others, it might be a bit risky, but also if you have a writer's block, this is a good way to get unblocked because you're just trying to get your thoughts out. So you can use it as a technique, but be sure to edit it very extensively afterwards. Let's talk about nonlinear narratives for storytelling and personal statements. In traditional essay writing approaches, people follow an ordered chronology. So things happen in sequence. Like first, you wake up in the morning, then you brush your teeth, then you go and cook breakfast, and then you put up pants and go to office. But what if you change the order of those events? For example, first scene, you win the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. Congrats, you did it. Second scene, a year ago, you could not even edit a video. It shows how you're struggling to do some basic video editing done. The software is confusing, things don't make sense, it's all a massive mess. Third scene, somehow a month before the Junior Challenge deadline. You get Christopher Nolan to give you feedback on your script and that feedback changes everything. You really find a way to make the video work and you have this creative idea that no one else has. See, in this structure, you're not focusing on the events because the order of the events is not what the essay is about. It's about your persistence, your grit, your unorthodox thinking and all these things can be highlighted through contrast better when the events are not in sequence. So nonlinear storytelling is great to invoke a reader's curiosity create a sense of mystery and to create a slight sense of confusion that's momentary in nature because very soon you're going to reconcile that and give resolution to the mystery you created artificially yourself. So nonlinear storytelling is very cinematic in nature. It's like a movie. So if you like to think in terms of a movie setting, like how scenes can be juxtaposed and how you can creatively organize things, it might be a great way to structure your essay for you. But be very careful, it can be confusing. I will advise you to make people read your essays and ask them if they are confused or if they like the way things are structured. You can also experiment with different kinds of structure and really see what works. Some people who are known for nonlinear storytelling are Gabriel Garcia Marquez for 100 Years of Solitude, Christopher Nolan for Interstellar and many other movies, and David Mitchell for Cloud Atlas. So do I recommend nonlinear storytelling for everyone? No but it's a great tool for those who like movies and who like to think in terms of scenes and who like to create a mystery and then reconcile that mystery near the conclusion. To take your personal statements to the next level, you can experiment with the form or the genre of your personal statement. This is very risky, so take it with a grain of salt, but it's really up to you. So for example, I know people who have tried haiku, poems, who have tried diary entries or journal entries, or the style of it for personal statements. The idea is to catch the attention of the reader because they read so many essays and every essay is very similar or they use the hero's journey as the basic template. If you have a different kind of genre that communicates a few things. One, you're comfortable with risks. To stand out, you are gonna accept risks. 
Two, it's a great idea if the form you choose is consistent with your strengths. That means if you are one of the best young poets of your country, writing a poem in your personal statement is a great way. Trying different forms or genres of writing is also a great way to stand out in your supplements, especially if you're writing college supplements for US undergrad admissions, that's a great way to stand out. Like I think a few years ago, someone wrote hashtag Black Lives Matter for their college supplement and got into a really prestigious university. So things like that can stand out. But if you try to copy someone else doing the same thing, it wouldn't work. The reason why something unique works in the first place is because it's unique. If there are a bunch of copycats, it won't work anymore. Some cool examples of using different kinds of genres for writing would be Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is a collection of diary entries to tell a horror story about a Dracula. Frankenstein by Mark Shelley also uses the same kind of approach where they use journal entries to talk about a horrifying experience. The last storytelling arc I want to talk about is the allegory. Allegory is a format where you use the literal to symbolize an abstract idea. So you use a lot of metaphors and similes and all that good stuff to represent something abstract. I think an easy way to explain this is through an example. George Orwell in Animal Firm uses allegorical characters to talk about the rise of Stalinism. In that book, a bunch of animals in a farm are protesting and basically Stalinism is rising after the revolution. Similarly, Arthur Miller in his book The Crucible uses the Salem witch trials as a symbol to represent McCarthyism in the US where a bunch of people were taken into prison by the suspect of being communists. So you see how a story about witch hunting where women were suspected to be witches, which was not true, was used to represent communists suspects in the US in 1950s. So an allegory is a way to represent an abstract thing from a metaphorical thing. I think it's a great way of writing abstract essays and college supplements because oftentimes colleges will ask you to write things like what's the biggest injustice in the world or what's the biggest threat to climate and I think if you can come up with an allegorical story to talk about something deep then that's a great way to stand out. All right, that's an end of this video. That was six storytelling arts that can take your personal statement to the next level. The motivation of this video is you will research more about these and experiment with a few and really take your personal statements to the ultimate level. If you found this useful, thank you and subscribe to the channel so that I can help you with more stuff like this.